And now we're diving into emergency medicine in Nigeria. And to talk about this, we have here with us Dr. Kevin Adeleke, an emergency medicine physician who is certified by the American Board of Emergency Medicine Physicians and currently practicing in New York and Georgia. Welcome to the show, Dr. Thank Kevin. Thank you. I appreciate Welcome it. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for for being here with us on the show. And like I already just said, we're talking about emergency medicine in Nigeria. Yes. So first of all, please, what is emergency medicine? Uh, emergency medicine is a, a medical specialty that deals specifically with um, treating patients in an emergency department. Okay. And, and also um, the treating patients before they arrive to the emergency department. Okay. okay. And um, then the next question may be, what is an emergency department? So. Okay. Um, what an emergency department is, it's just usually an area of the hospital where people where that receives patients that, that, um, that come in either from the waiting room or um, by, by ambulance or they're brought in by a family member for any type of emergency care. And um, the difference between this and a clinic is usually with a clinic, um, you may walk in with a, um, with a problem that's not very urgent or not very critical, or you may have an appointment for, um, for a checkup or just um, for a health maintenance but emergency care is um the most common the most i guess the most common types of emergencies are are, are trauma are trauma, trauma related okay. or meaning uh, maybe somebody has an injury mm -hmm. and then they'll okay. arrive they'll come to the emergency department sense. or or sometimes it doesn't even have to be trauma like a lot of the um more common complaints are headache um chest pain abdominal pain these are concerns that someone may have that day, and so they're concerned, and so they, they'll come to the hospital for, um, to be evaluated by a physician. But does that right? really qualify as an emergency, emergency situation? I mean, it can, because um, if you had a he have a headache, it can be a migraine, or it can be um, a brain abscess, which is an infection in the brain that may require drainage, or it can be um, some sort of abnormal bleeding. Or if they have um, chest pain, they can have... Um, it can be muscular pain, or it can be a heart attack. Okay. Um, oh. If they have trouble breathing, maybe it can be um, an asthma exacerbation, or maybe they can have a situation where um, they have heart failure, where um, maybe their heart's not pumping efficiently enough, and so fluid may back up into the lungs, which can prevent breathing. So, I mean, those things can be emergencies. You know? Okay. Okay, so what emergency measures should be put in place for, uh, for accident, accident victims? Here in, in Nigeria? In Nigeria. Okay. There already is um, an, an emergency, an EMS system, which is an emergency medical service system. Mm -hmm. there, are already, there are already multiple systems in place. And there's actually been, um, been a significant amount of funding um, allocated to the development of this system. But I, and so I think, um, and so if your question is what should be done, I think that, I think that the, the system just needs to be developed more. Like maybe there, um, like there, uh, there needs to be more, more, more people trained, and uh, more EMS providers trained. I'm um, including um, paramedics, which would be and paramedics, ambulance drivers. There need to be more ambulances. And so I think if they had uh, more of these things, then um, it would significantly decrease morbidity and mortality in Nigeria. In Nigeria. And what that means is maybe is that there'd be a decrease in the amount of disease and a decrease in the amount of deaths, Death rate. Okay. specifically with um, uh, trauma-related deaths. Okay. For example, um, motor vehicle accidents, mm -hmm. motorcycle accidents, um, pedestrians who are struck by automobiles and things like that. Um, if, if, the, if the EMS system were improved, then those people can be transported. And they can be stabilized, assessed, stabilized, and then transported to, a, um, to the, the closest hospital capable of taking care of them. And then okay. potentially many lives can be saved. Is, is, uh, it, is it necessary for an emergency care provider to have a history, a medical history of a person who has been rushed into emergency? Mm. I think it was, it's highly recommended. Okay. And this is what I mean. So um, it, a lot of people have smartphones. And even if you don't have a smartphone, you can easily have a card with your medical history that okay. you just carry in your pocket, in your yes. wallet or whatever. You know? How about word of mouth? Well, well actually, you should know your history. Yeah. Okay. So you should know your So you should have it written down, but you should absolutely, I agree, you should know okay. it. Um, that way, when you're evaluated by the practitioner, you can, um, you can tell them what your medical history is, uh, your surgical history, any medication allergies, your list of medications and doses. You should be, you should, you should be able to, uh, to give them all that. these things. Exactly. Okay. A lot of people don't, but I think that, um, I mean, I, 
I agree that I think that people should take more responsibility and they should know these things because then it'll make it'll actually streamline their care and it'll make their care uh, the health care that they receive will be be much better. better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So who administers you know, emergency medicine at that point of emergency? You know, say for instance, someone slumps and mm -hmm. they're bystanders and there's no doctor or nurse per se. People have the concern that I'm not the one who should be administering that. Or if you go into a hospital, you know, there's, there's a question of, you know, sometimes some nurses may tell you, oh, I'm not mental, you have to wait. So who should administer emergency yes, medicine? In the street. So let's say someone's outside mm -hmm. and something happens. I think that there, there's no policy. There, because you're not in a hospital and because you're not in, um, because you're not in, a, in, a, in a building or a hospital or in a healthcare setting, there's no policy. And so I think that it, it depends. Okay. Okay. And what I mean is if you, have a, um, if you have a patient and let's say that they have, a, let's say they have an allergic reaction or something. In, in, um, some, so in the States, I know they have um, something called an EpiPen, an epinephrine pen. And mm -hmm. so if, if a family member knows that a person needs a certain medication because of some pre-existing medical condition that they have, then by all means, they should give it. Okay. You see? Because, well, who else is going to do it? And if that's going to help, then they should receive it. In a hospital, is completely different because most um, medication administration in hospitals is usually protocol-driven, mm. you see. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've worked in some hospitals where nurses can give any medication, no problem. Okay. I can just give the verbal order, and they can give the medication. Okay. Um, I've been in other hospitals where the nurses say, no, I can't give this medication because this is our policy, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and it's funny because sometimes the patient may really need it and they won't give it, you know. Yeah. But then um, I have a conversation with the same nurse later and they say, well, I actually can give it at my other job, you know. Yeah. Oh, because okay, it's a different so it depends on the hospital. On the hospital. Yeah, yeah. so it depends on the hospital. It depends on the person because some people, if someone really needs something, some people will, will just break the rules in order to help the person, yes. you see. Mm -hmm. which, I, which I think is fine. I think, so, I think sometimes it's okay to break protocol if it's going to benefit someone. But won't okay. that hurt the, the person administering? I mean, talking about licenses and being, don't I mean, be, wouldn't it hurt you? I mean, it depends. And so what I mean when I say that is, so if I, if, if I, if I have a patient, a critical patient who's unstable and they may need medication right now, all right, this patient, all right, for example, let's say that someone brings a patient in. We don't know who the patient is. So the patient's not registered. They're not in our system. Technically, we can't give the patient any, any medication until mm -hmm. we, we enter their name because we have to account for all of the medication given. Mm -hmm. I may ask the nurse, please give them this medication, and they're not going to know who the person is. They can't enter the name, but they'll give it anyway, you see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the protocol is that the, the patient shouldn't get it, but the pro protocol is made for, for a majority of, 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 of instances. But there are some times we just have to make exceptions for the benefit of the patient. Okay. And so I think in those times... Save means, lives. You should, yeah. Yes, you should, you should break protocol and, and, and give the patient the medication that's going to benefit them. All right. Okay, so let's talk about police reports and emergency cases. I know here in Nigeria sometimes when we have um, emergency cases, the hospital will tell you to provide a police report before they can attend to the patient. Do you think it's a good idea to do that? So I think that, I think that in a hospital setting, I think that the patient's the priority. And I think that nothing should stand in the way of, of um, treating a patient. Um, there are times when uh, maybe, there's, maybe there's some sort of crime, like, for example, maybe the patient's gotten shot or stabbed. And so then sometimes um, law enforcement, of course, they, they're doing their job. And so they want to they investigate and they want to ask questions. But if your question the patient is interfering with my care, then that's a problem. And I think that the officer should, should wait until I finish um, stabilizing and treating the patient. Then they can ask whatever questions they need to ask, you know. Mm. And so I think that the, so to answer your question, the patient should be the priority. Should be the priority. Exactly. Let's move on to car accidents. So um, car accidents vis-a-vis -vis ambulance response time. Mm. Um, in all the countries of the world, in the U.S. and the U.K., there's a quicker response, response. time. But yeah. our reality in Nigeria is that sometimes if you do have the ambulance number to call, or if you do have an emergency number to call, Response time is not always that spontaneous. So you see people who have been um, involved in a ghastly motor accident. Mm -hmm. Most times, because we don't have a set specific set time for ambulance response time, a lot of people just say, pick the next available vehicle and rush these guys to the hospital. The question is, one, how should those concerned persons who are trying to save that life, 
how should they handle the person? I've heard all sorts of things. I've heard if someone just had an accident, just lay them flat. I've heard, no, make them seat. I've heard, no, give them water. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of things. Yeah. So what should be the standard operational practice for those kind mm -hmm. of stuff? Unt at least until they get to the hospital, how should I keep an accident victim's table? Ideally, I think that if, um, if in a, specifically for motor vehicle accidents, I think that um, I think if there's a person who's injured, they shouldn't, you shouldn't give them anything to drink or eat, and you shouldn't mm -hmm. move them. Okay. Unless the vehicle may explode. Okay. Now, if the vehicle is on fire or it may explode or the, patient, or the patient's in, in danger because the vehicle's in the middle of the road and there are other cars coming, mm -hmm. then you should move the patient because then, then you risk further injury. Okay. But if the, um, if the patient is safe, like, for example, traffic is stopped, um, the vehicle is not on fire, it's not in any danger of exploding, then I think that the patient, you should leave the patient. Because if the patient has, if, because if the patient has an injury you'll potentially worsen the in injury by yeah. moving them. Well, what oh, if yeah. there's no ambulance in sight? And I'm concerned. I'm worried that this person is just there. What if waiting would make the person actually lose And there's no life. medical person around. So if, there's, so if no ambulance is going to come, then the best thing you can do is transport the patient. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if, there's gonna, if, so if, there, if an ambulance is coming, then leave the patient so you don't okay. risk further injury. Mm. But if no ambulance is coming, then the best thing you can do is take the patient to the hospital. To the hospital. You see? hospital. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you so much, Dr. No Kevin problem. and Daily for, for joining us on the show thank today. You. To enjoy more interesting episodes of Tea or Coffee, then like and subscribe.